Good morning. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God. This is the 2nd of September. Can you believe that we are in this brand new month? Wow. Children going back to school, all kinds of things happening. And one month closer to Jesus coming. One month closer, one day closer to Jesus coming on this September 2nd. You can get ready, Ecclesiastes. We've also begun to read a new book, and we are still in chapter one. We are in chapter one, and we are on verse one. How about that? And we're going to hear all about what Solomon has to say. <clears throat> but to lead into that, and the reason I was almost one minute late, the Lord was giving me some words to sing, a new song, a new song, right, here we go, right off of the press. I just finished writing it out. Well, I never felt more like greeting the day, never felt more like saying his name, hallelujah. Jesus is, is, is the king, he is Jesus the king, hallelujah. He is Jesus the King. Well, I never felt more like reading his word. Never felt more like singing his praise. Hallelujah. We're going to read his word. Jesus is Lord, oh Jesus is King. Come and join us, he is with us. Hallelujah. We're going to shout his name. Well, heaven is near, never shedding a tear. We are waiting, he's gonna come on a cloud. Hallelujah. We will be shouting out loud. Hallelujah. We're gonna shout out loud. Well, I have to brush up on that a little bit, but that's the first time I sang it. Just for you and for him. All right, <clears throat> here we are to begin this brand new book, Ecclesiastes, which means preacher, teacher, okay? Ecclesiastes uh, is, Ecclesia is the Greek for church or congregation, a coming together, an Ecclesia, okay? So we have Ecclesiastes by Solomon, the preacher, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, And oh, he has been thinking and thinking. Remember, he asked the Lord for the gift to have knowledge. And he starts off, vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I think he has himself in kind of an uproar. He's thought about so many things. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? How about that question? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. The wind goes toward the south, and then it turns around toward the north. The wind whirls about continually. <clears throat> and oh, don't we sadly know that in America today, after this monster called Ida has gone through doing so much damage and taking some precious lives the wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Did you ever think of that? The sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. <clears throat> the eye is not satisfied with seeing. 
Isn't that an amazing statement? And we just keep on seeing, don't we? We don't, we just keep on doing it. We're not satisfied. <clears throat> Nor the ear filled with hearing. There's always room for more, isn't there? We can hear more. That which has been is what will be. And that which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new? And, oh, scientists, all kinds of people could argue that, couldn't they? Yeah, I, let me show you the new invention. It has already been in ancient times before us. Have you ever wondered that? Have you ever wondered if there was a far gone generation who had cars and trucks and there is no remembrance of former times nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after us they will come after I the preacher was king over Israel in Jerusalem and I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven. This burdensome task God has given to the sons of man, by which they may be exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed, all is vanity and grasping for the wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. And we're talking about the heart now. Now he's going to say, I communed with my heart. And you know what? Right away, all I could think of, and so I have it open here to read to you, is Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. God says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. And you can pick that little portion of the word up again in Romans chapter 2, verse 6. And so Solomon goes on and he says, I communed with my heart saying, look, I have attained greatness and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge. And I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. How about that? For a variety of up and down. I perceived that this also is grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. And we move along to chapter 2. I said in my heart, Come now, I will test you with mirth, therefore enjoin pleasure. But surely this also was vanity. I said of laughter, madness, and of mirth. What does it accomplish? I searched my heart, how to gratify my flesh with wine, while guiding my heart with wisdom, and how to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their life. I made my works great, I built myself houses, and planted myself vineyards, I made myself gardens, 
and orchards, and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were gathered in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the provinces. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men and musical instruments of all kinds, all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Yerushalayim. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Good memory. Whatever my eyes desired, <clears throat> I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my reward from all my labor. And then I looked out on all the works that my hands had done and on the labor in which I had toiled. And indeed, all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. He's about taking himself overboard on this, isn't he? And then I turned myself to consider wisdom and madness and folly. How about that for three subjects? For what can the man do who succeeds the king? Only what he has already done. And then I saw that wisdom excels folly, as light excels darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet I myself perceived that the same event happens to them all. So I said in my heart, as it happens to the fool, it also happens to me. And why was I then more wise? And then I said to my heart, this is also vanity. For there is no more remembrance of the wise than of the fool forever, since all that now is will be forgotten in the days to come. And how does a wise man die? As the fool. Therefore, I hated life because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me, for all is vanity and grasping for the wind. And then I hated all my labor in which I had toiled under the sun because I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will rule over all my labor in which I toiled, and in which I have shown myself wise under the sun. <clears throat> and you know, when I read that, Solomon said that, I thought, well, you inherited all from your father, all that he did, all that he built. But let's continue with what Solomon has to say. And he says, this also is vanity. Therefore, I turned my heart and I despaired. I despaired of all in which I had toiled under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is with wisdom 
knowledge, and skill. Yet he must leave his heritage to a man who has not labored for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. For what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart for which he has toiled under the sun? For all his days are sorrowful and his work burdensome. Even in the night, his heart takes no rest. This also is vanity. Nothing is better for a man than he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw was from the hand of God. For who can eat and who can have enjoyment more than I? For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may, might give it to him who is good before God. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. And we move along to chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, the church, the gathering. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. <clears throat> a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. <clears throat> a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors. I have seen the God-given task with which the son of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I know that <clears throat> nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. That which is has already been and what is to be 
has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. Moreover, I saw under the sun, <clears throat> in the place of judgment, wickedness was there. And in the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. I said in my heart, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart, concerning the condition of the sons of men, God tests them, that they may see that they themselves are like animals. For what happens to the sons of men also happens to the animals. <clears throat> one thing befalls them, and as one dies, so dies the other. Boy, have we seen that today. Surely, they all have one breath. Man has no advantage over animals, for all is vanity. All go to one place. All are from the dust, and all return to the dust. Who knows the spirit of the sons of men, which goes upward, and the spirit of the animal, which goes down to the earth? So, I perceive that nothing is better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his heritage. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? There you have it. That's an awful lot. A lot of words, a lot of thoughts, a lot of opinions, a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, and yet Solomon says all is vanity. All of it. It's all vanity. Lord willing, we'll see what more he has to say tomorrow. We move right along to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, if you want to. Turn there in your Bible, if, if you're following it with one. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul goes on with all that he's teaching and saying, We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says in Isaiah 49 chapter 8, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Paul exclaims, We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. In much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleepiness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge. Do you see kind of a same thread here that Paul is saying? That all the lists that Solomon made? By long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor 
and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying. And behold, we live as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. O oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. And we will continue, Lord willing, what Paul has to say tomorrow. I am amazed at how Ecclesiastes and 2 Corinthians 6 are similar. Aren't you? Wow. Amazing. Amazing God. All right, we move along, y'all, to Psalm 46. And, oh, this is so familiar. This is so comforting for today. This is a song for Alamot. It was given to the chief musicians, and it's a psalm of the sons of Korah. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and doesn't that feel like it? That storm moved everything. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. So we can have even more severe things happen according to this. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. Oh, and we've read it's going to come right out of the temple, isn't it? And it's going to flow two ways. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. Oh, Kathy has a beautiful graphic of the earth melting. You better go see that one. That will shock you. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, Jacob, is our refuge. Selah. Stop. Contemplate. Think about this. Go over it. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and he cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. 
Say la. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the God that heals you and me. We wrap up today's reading with Proverbs 22, 15. Oh, I tell you what. All the young parents with children, <clears throat> grandparents taking care of grandchildren, this is for you. Proverbs 22, 15. Connie's got it right there. Foolishness. Speaking of the heart again. We've spoken of the heart, haven't we? And then Paul made this big list that comes from the heart. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Yes, that fatty little place on the back of you. I believe with all my heart God made it just like it is also for a good smack when you need to be corrected as a child as well as sitting down on a chair. Oh, y'all, people who say, oh, no, I, I would never strike my child. You will look and see that they have very difficult, disobedient children that grow up to be disobedient adults, and that is not good. That's why we get disciplined as a child, right? Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. And that's what you want. You want foolishness to be far away from your child. Wow. That's the kind ought to be written on the bathroom mirror and memorized. Well, y'all, what, I mean, aren't you amazed at God's word? I am amazed. Oh, my. Mm. I was up rereading it again in the night, just gleaning and gleaning. Ask Holy Spirit. He will reveal to you. He will reveal to you. Go over it again. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Oh, our precious Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We come to you, Lord, in his name. There you are, Jesus, right at the right-hand side of your Father now. And the two of you, just fellowshipping, enjoying one another. Wow. I mean, there, there is our great example. You are our example, Jesus. No one was more obedient than you were. Father asked you to go to the cross and bear our sins, our sicknesses. Carry it to the cross. Bleed, be beaten, big stripes down your back, beaten for our healing. And you said yes, and you went. There was no foolishness in you. You were obedient. You are our example. You are our King, our Lord. We worship you this morning, Jesus. <clears throat> we worship you through the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost, stirred up by the Holy Ghost. What a trinity. Never disagreeing, always working together. Lord, we want to thank you for this word. You spoke this word, and you've preserved it for us through all the hateful enemies that tried to stamp it out, all the generations. 
Wars couldn't do it. Men couldn't do it. Circumstances on the earth couldn't do it. You saved it, and you saved it through your precious people, the Jews. And I am so grateful to them. So grateful to them. They suffered to preserve it. Thank you to your people. Lord, we hold up Yerushalayim, who we've read about this morning. Your city, your special city, where, Jesus, you walked. We pray for peace today, Lord. You've asked us to. You said, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we speak those words out in prayer. We pray for your peace, Jerusalem. We see it in the spirit. We hope it in our hearts that you will have peace today within your city walls. Oh, Father God, bless the IDF, the wonderful army, the wonderful body. Oh, they, they go about and they are instantly ready to squash any attack, to take on anyone who tries to do destruction. Bless them, Lord. Bless those who are coming today by plane or whatever transportation to be new, to come home, to make Aliyah, to come back to Israel, come back to the land, to live on it. This is their heart's desire. They have, they have quoted words. Next year in Jerusalem. Well, next year has come. And they are in Jerusalem. And more are coming. Father God, let all of those flights be safe. Let all of those people in far off places, Father, have courage. Have courage to get on the plane. Not to hang back but to take advantage that you will bring them home. You will give them a new life. You, you've prepared for them to come. They can trust you. Oh, I pray for them, Lord. I pray for them. Then I lift up America, Lord. And I lift up Afghanistan. And Father God, never have we been so ashamed, so sold out, so many people put in harm's way, left behind, killed. Lord, I hold up all of those families who had to receive their sons and daughters back home in caskets. And I pray, Holy Ghost, please go and comfort them. They need you so much. We honor them. We honor their lives. You did not die in vain. Your blood was shed for us, for America, for freedom, for free people everywhere. You were brave, you were bold. You gave it your all and we honor you. And we pray for all of the families, all of the friends who feel such a loss, such a suffering. Lord, we'd ask and we would pray that you would have your will, your will and your way. And sometimes, Lord, that's, that's so hard to understand but we are praying and we are asking you to help us we are trusting you Lord we trust you you are the one who heals you are the one who will redeem you are the one who will take tragedy and sadness and bloodshed and somehow turn it around 
to have a better ending than any, everyone feels right now. We'd ask, Lord, that you would be with all those who are over there. I'd ask that you'd hide innocent people, hide believers from the hands of wicked men who want to destroy. Lord, I'd ask that somehow all of the uproar, all of the, the fear, I'd ask, Lord, you'd, you'd give them confidence that the spirit of fear would not paralyze. Lord, they've seen many brave souls go on to heaven. And they will be honored in heaven. They will be honored in heaven for the bloody martyr's death that they received. You honor martyrs in a special way, somehow. Lord, comfort all of those. Cause all who are there to be brave, to be bold. We'd ask that angels would come, angels everywhere, angels to confuse the plans of the enemy, angels to hide from vision those who are trembling, who are fearful, who are hunted down, who've been threatened. Lord, please, please. Lord, we'd ask that you would deal with our leadership, that you would have your will and your way. We'd ask, Lord, we pray for all the enemies who hate America, who are here, and all their purpose every day is to ruin America, is to tear it down, is, it, is to take away our freedoms. Lord, we'd ask that we would rise up, that you would give us boldness and courage to rise up and defend our Constitution, to rise up and defend our freedoms, to preserve them for our children, our grandchildren. Father God, cause us to do all you would have us to do, not to shrink back, but to be bold here in America. And Lord, we'd ask that you would confuse the enemy's plans, that you would tie their hands that they would try to do one thing and it would fall to the ground, undone, useless. Father God, we have friends and relatives to name and to hold up to you today, Lord, for healing those who have died of COVID. Father God, I hold up my, my precious sister, Lee, who has said goodbye to her husband, Bill. And yet she is overcoming the threat of COVID. Father God, I hold her up to be brave at this time. I hold up the children, Hal and Kim and Lynn and all of the relatives. And I'd ask that you would comfort this family at this time. And Father God, others, brothers and sisters right now, are holding up many situations, holding up people who are near death on COVID, and we're praying for their healing. We are praying for their healing. We will pray, Lord, until you have taken them. We will pray that many you will heal. You will raise them back up, and you will use them in a mighty way for this day and age. Father God, I'd ask that your blood would be on all your church, all of the righteous, <clears throat> that we can walk covered by your blood, safe under your covering, the covering of your wings. We can picture ourselves boldly going about sharing your gospel sharing this word, Lord, here in America and in every country in the world. Every country in the world. Lord, protect your believers that they might 
finish up your great commission until everyone has heard. Not one left out. Everyone has heard. For the word says, then you'll come. If we want to see you come, if we want to hasten along your coming, then we need to hasten along, Lord, our witness, our boldness, our boldness to ask to pray with somebody to receive you as Lord and Savior, to repent of their sins, to, to speak words that you will give that will guide them to do that. Help us, Lord. Help us to be soul winners today. We pray all these prayers, Lord. You hear them all. And we pray them in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua. Oh, hallelujah. And to that, Lord, for this time of being together, we say amen together. And then go right on with prayers you haven't had a chance to say yet. This is a special time, anointed, holy. Thank you all for coming. For anyone who is new, thank you. We pray that you would come back, that you would, you would be a part. We welcome you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord, y'all. Bye-bye.